Hello there. You're watching All24 News, World News Program, live here in Algiers with me, Karim Fazakri. These are your headlines. More than 900 bodies have been found in areas surrounding the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, following Russian troops withdrawal from the area. The European Union on Friday denounced the unjustified expulsion of 18 diplomats from its representation in Russia and deplored in a press release a pure measure of retaliation after a similar measure taken by Brussels. The German Minister of Foreign Affairs, accompanied by her delegation, met the Nigerian President and the Nigerian Minister of Foreign Affairs and discussed the major challenges facing Niger. South African president described on Friday the disaster that hit South Africa as a never seen before in the country after the terrible floods which killed nearly 400 people. Those were today's top stories and we kick off our news with this info. More than 900 bodies have been found in areas surrounding the Ukrainian capital Kiev following Russian troops' withdrawal from the area. On Friday, the police said most people were shot dead and simply executed, adding that at least 350 bodies were found in the town of Bucha alone. Andrei Nebyatov, the head of the capital's regional police force, said the bodies were abandoned in the streets or given temporary burials. He cited police data indicated 95% died from gunshot wounds. I want to say that the number of killed civilians has surpassed 900. And I emphasize, these are civilians whose bodies we have discovered and handed over for forensic examination. This is more than 900 people currently killed at the hands of the Russian army. I also want to say that Bucha has the most significant number of victims. This suggests that the occupiers, the units that operated in Bucha, were the most brutal. The most victims were found in Bucha, where there are more than 350. A Ukrainian military spokesman said Thursday that the Russian offensive is continuing in the east of Ukraine. Spokesman for the general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces added that the city of Kharkiv remains blockaded and Russian forces are carrying out brutal measures in the Kherson region. The enemy continues to be active in the Slobozansky, Donetsk, Pivdenobovsky and Tavria directions. In the Slobozansky direction, the enemy continue to blockade the city of Kharkiv and carry out artillery shelling. In the Donetsk and Taveria directions, the enemy continues artillery shellings of the settlement of Popasna. The goal is to resume the offensive of Robizny, Nazny and Novobakmotevka. The occupiers also tried unsuccessfully to break through the defenses of our troops in the area of the settlement of Novotoshkivsky. A Russian strike overnight hit a factory in the Kiev region that manufactured missiles that the Ukrainian army says it was used to hit the Russian military ship Moskova. Hossam Berkan has more details. In the aftermath of the sinking of its flagship in the Black Sea, Russia promised Friday to intensify its strikes on Kyiv in response to attacks which it described as terrorists. The first targeting the manufacturer of the Neptune missiles, with which the Ukrainians claim to have sunk the Moskva. Andrei Sezov, owner of the carpentry workshop next to the Vizar factory, says that he surviving the strike was a miracle. Around 1 a.m., a guard called me to tell me there were strikes. There were five airstrikes around 1.25 a.m. 
People used to live here. A worker lived on this floor. They say it's a miracle he survived. Three people were injured. He lived there, on the third floor, near the manager's office. Russian Defense Ministry spokesman Igor Konashinkov confirmed that Russia has targeted a military equipment factory in Kyiv a day after Russian forces warned they would step up their attacks on the Ukrainian capital. High-precision, long-range air-to-ground weapons destroyed production building of an arm factory in Kiev and a repair shop of military equipment in Nikolaev. This comes as the U.S. President Joe Biden finally acceded to Ukraine's request on Wednesday, promising massive new military aid of $800 million, including armor and long-range guns. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says the war would be much shorter if he received the necessary weapons. Let's listen. The faster and a greater quantity will receive the weapons we have asked for, the stronger our position will be and the faster peace will come. A diplomatic note sent by Moscow to Washington in which it warns against continuing to arm Ukraine during the current crisis. Russia sent an official diplomatic note to the United States and NATO regarding shipments of the most sensitive weapons systems, saying that they add fuel to the fire in the conflict. In what appeared to be veiled threat, the Russian memo said continued arms shipments to Ukraine would lead to unpredictable consequences. Russia is staging helicopters attack at Ukraine's eastern border and sending new soldiers and artillery into the country to get ready for that fight, as Putin announced an offensive in eastern Ukraine. Ukrainian fighters says they are ready to go all the way to resist. We will give them a dignified welcome and we will fight to the end for what we have, our dear Ukraine. I don't think that the war can last long. It won't. Everything has an end. We won't retreat because this is our land. How can we be Nazis? If we are at home and someone accuses us of being Nazis, when they came here and made fun of peaceful people while civilians and children are dying. The European Union on Friday denounced the unjustified expulsion of 18 diplomats from its representation in Russia and deplored in a press release a pure measure of retaliation after a similar measure taken by Brussels following the Kremlin offensive in Ukraine. The EU statement said that the diplomats in question performed their duties within the framework of and in full respect of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. Ukrainian officials say that multiple strikes hit a residential area of Kharkiv along Liberty Street, the city's main street. The shelling of a residential area killed seven people including a seven-month-old child and wounded 34, according to regional governor. Ukraine accuses Russian forces of preparing for a new offensive in eastern Ukraine. The country alleged fighting also went on in the pummeled southern port city of Mariupol, where locals reported seeing Russian troops digging up bodies. German Finance Minister Christian Lindner has confirmed that Berlin will boost its military assistance spending in 2022 to 2 billion euros. The increase in the budget will be dedicated for global military assistance, with reports suggesting more than 1 billion euros will be kept for Ukraine. Germany has supplied Ukraine with military supplies, including grenades, anti-aircraft rockets, machine guns and ammunition, but not heavy weapons. U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham, who heads a delegation visiting Taiwan, said China must pay a higher price for supporting Russia's invasion of Ukraine, as Mr. Graham described it. We're going to start making China pay a greater price for what they're doing all over the world. The support for Putin must come with a price. 
China confirms that the air and maritime exercises conducted by the People's Liberation Army in the East China Sea near Taiwan were a response to the visit of an American delegation led by Senator Lindsey Graham to the island. China strongly opposes any form of official relations between the United States and Taiwan. The U.S. senators should follow the U.S. government's One China policy, respect the principles of One China and the three joint China-U.S. communique, and end official relations between the two sides. The Chinese military decision is a countermeasure to the recent negative actions of the United States and the last visit to Taiwan by U.S. senators. And in Niamey, Niger, the German Minister of Foreign Affairs, Annalena Baerbock, accompanied by the delegation, met the Nigerian President Mohamed Bazoum and the Nigerian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Asumi Masudu. During their discussions, they discussed the major challenges facing Niger, including terrorism and the climate crisis. We have talked a lot about the cooperation that has existed for many decades between Niger and Germany and the fact that it is an important cooperation between our two countries. Your country faces great challenges simultaneously. First, there is the security danger, violence and terrorism, but also the climate crisis that we're only beginning to feel in Europe, but that we feel here in a dramatic way. The food supply, the need for training for many young people, and the need to address these major challenges together. That is what Mr. President and I have been talking about on a sustained basis. Following public announcements made by the UK and the UN Refugee Agency expressed strong opposition and concerns about the United Kingdom's plan to export its asylum obligations and urged the UK to refrain from transferring asylum seekers and refugees to Rwanda for asylum processing. In Sweden, violent riots erupted in the center of the Nordic country on Friday as counter-protesters demonstrated against a far-right group's intention to burn a Quran in Oribo city. Police announced on its website that four police cars had been set on fire and at least four police officers and one individual had been injured. Police disbanded the demonstration to calm the situation and later in the evening said most counter-demonstrators had left the area. South African president described on Friday the disaster that hit South Africa as had never seen before in the country. After the terrible floods which killed nearly 400 people, the search and rescue operation continued in the most affected area of Durban. Nabil Khazini reports. The terrible floods that have hit South Africa claim nearly 400 lives and 41,000 victims. The search for those still missing continues. But on the fifth day of the deadliest storm to strike South Africa's coastal city of Durban, rescuers have a little hope of finding a survivor. So it's a, it's a week now we're looking for him, a body. We can't find that, that boy. We're still looking for him. We need some help, please. It's not the only one here who's missing here. Because now we have, we have the rescue team finally uh, has reached here. But um, seeing the rain that is coming back, it's gonna, they're going to be disrupted by the rain. And then there won't be any searching or going further. Roads were devastated and bridges collapsed. Over 250 schools were affected and thousands of homes were destroyed. The authorities anticipate hundreds of millions of euros in damages. After having lost everything, Durban flood victims find sheltering in the underground community halls at Omlazi Lodge. There's not enough space. There's not enough space. This uh, uh, community hall is too small for them. But because they, 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 they got no option, other option. Southern Africa is regularly affected by deadly storms during the hurricane season. Following days of severe storms and flooding, more rain and damaging winds are expected across South Africa's east coast. President Sam Yasulu Hassan of Tanzania was on a mission to revive the tourism sector in her country and strengthens bilateral ties with the U.S. on Friday. Miriam Zian in the following. 
The first female head of Africa and first female vice president of the U.S. met on Friday at the White House in Washington, D.C. During the briefing, Kamala Harris stated that their talks mainly focused on strengthening democracy, Tanzania's economic prosperity and empowering women leaders. The focus of this trip includes in the United States focusing on the investment opportunities as it relates to the economy as a general matter, but also in the area of tourism. And your trip has also generated nearly $1 billion dollars in new investments from companies in the United States. And uh, that has and will contribute, no doubt, to the economic growth of Tanzania, but in that way will contribute to the growth, the economic growth and jobs in the United States as well. The president of Tanzania expressed her enthusiasm for developing more trade between the two countries for mutual benefit. Working on human rights and rule of law and democracy. Uh, Tanzania have made commendable strides in these areas, as you have mentioned, and we are committed to taking deliberate measures to ensure inclusion, cohesion, unity, and respect for all Tanzanians. And in so doing, the political parties and stakeholders convene meetings to deliberate on collective and productive ways of running political activities in our country while at the same time safeguarding country's interest. The president also tackled the upcoming premiere of the Royal Tour program, which showcases Tanzania's tourist attractions and investment potential. The two leaders concluded their commands by expressing how deeply committed they are to strengthen ties between Africa and the U.S. Zionist forces raided the Al-Aqsa Mosque in occupied East Al-Quds. Medics reported at least 158 Palestinians were injured in the resultant violence as hundreds were detained. The Islamic endowment that runs the site and said Zionist police entered in force before dawn on Friday. As thousands of worshippers were gathered at the mosque for early morning prayers. North Korea marked the 110th birthday of late founder Kim Second Song with fireworks, a procession, and an evening spectacle in Pyongyang's main plaza on Friday. Pyongyang traditionally uses the Day of the Sun Festival to show off its latest weapons, but there was no military parade this year. The American microblogging company Twitter adopted a strategy to shield itself from external acquisition bids to thwart Elon Musk's $43 billion and welcomed offer. The policy aims to help investors realize the value of their interest in the firm by lowering the chances of anybody gaining control without paying a premium to share shareholders. Three Chinese astronauts landed in northern China on Saturday after 183 days in space, state broadcast CCTV said, and in the country's longest crewed space mission to date. The Shenzhou-13 spacecraft is the latest mission in Beijing's drive to become a major space power, rivaling the United States after landing a rover on Mars and sending probes to the moon. And to Algeria now, Algeria celebrates today the Day of Science to commemorate the death of the reformer movement leader in Algeria, Abdel Hamid Ben Badis, who devoted his life for science and fighting France's policy of ignorance towards the Algerian people. On this occasion, President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboun, addressed a message to the Algerian people praising the country's approaches in education. The President has also invited Algerian youth to work more and attain cultural communication. And before we wrap it up, here is a reminder of our top stories.
More than 900 bodies have been found in areas surrounding the Ukrainian capital Kiev, following Russian troops' withdrawal from the area. The European Union on Friday denounced the unjustified expulsion of 18 diplomats from its representation in Russia and deplored in a press release a pure measure of retaliation after a similar measure taken by Brussels. The German Minister of Foreign Affairs, accompanied by her delegation, met the Nigerian or Nigerian President and the Nigerian Minister of Foreign Affairs and discussed the major challenges facing Niger. South African President Siti Ramaphosa described on Friday the disaster that hit South Africa as I never seen before in the country after the terrible floods which killed nearly 400 people. And with this, ladies and gentlemen, our news ends. Thank you for tuning in to our channel, and bye for now.